Hey everyone, welcome back to our DCS Liberation tutorial series. So in our last mission, we showed you how to make packages. Um, and I've gone ahead and already populated a couple more packages for this particular mission. Um, you can see them all on the left-hand side here, as well as you can see that we have multiple player slots. Um, and the reason that we have multiple player slots is that you can actually have, you know, like co-op multiplayer if you want. Or you can be like, hey, I, I want to start in a, you know, an F-18, and then I also want to fly an F-16. You know, it's totally up to you how you want to, you know, configure these missions. Um, in this case, I just put in two so that we'd have a demonstration of multiple players. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and generate our mission so that we can go ahead and fly it. So what we're going to want to do is go up to the top right up here and click the green takeoff button. Once we do this, we're going to see this uh, prompt here that says waiting for mission completion. Um, and it'll tell you that, you know, to launch the mission, you do a certain thing. And then if it doesn't detect things, you need to go and do the other things, um, which is all well and good. What this actually ends up doing is creating a mission file called liberation underscore next term mission, um, which you can load either as a single player client, like opening up DCS world and then just selecting it uh, or by using it on the um, standalone server and then hosting it as a, you know, as a mission. Uh, this actually will, will, Put it wherever your DCS, uh, you know, missions are. So in my case, it's going to be under saved games, um, open beta, and then inside of missions. And we'll walk through how to select that with the server. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop to desktop, and we're going to go ahead and run our open beta server. Um, I've already got it set up to log in automatically for me. And what's going to happen is uh, there is no graphical user interface for the standalone server. If you've never used it before, it's going to just pop up this dialog box, which um, which will look a little bit like this. So this white box uh, is all you're going to get. There's really nothing else. I usually just minimize it. We'll drop back to desktop really quick here. And if we want to interface with the standalone server, uh, we're going to have to click on our web GUI here. Um, so let me zoom in a little on this to make it a little easier to read. Since this is just my, uh, this is Chrome, uh, which is my default browser. And what this is, is it will, it'll open up whatever your default browser is, and it will take you to uh, this index.html page for your graphical user interface. So it'll say server detected if it's able to detect that your standalone server is running. Um, if it's not running, it'll it'll just say that it can't find anything. Sometimes if you open this too quickly while the server is starting up, um, it'll just say, there'll be a button here that says retry, just click it a couple of times and it should, it should see it. So you're gonna go ahead and click connect. You'll notice that my server name is DCS server. It's probably gonna be um, the same probably be the same, I think. Um, I did change it earlier, but we're going to change it again. We're going to walk through that. It's going to have your IP address. Uh, it's going to have the port, whether it's public or not. Um, and as you can see, the server is offline on the top right corner here. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the gear icon. I'm going to name this uh, my server. I'm going to give it a password, a super secure password. Um, and then I'm going to leave everything else default. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can change integrity check. Typically, I think by, I think normally it's going to say require pure clients. I'm actually turning that off. And then under advanced, um, I'm going to leave everything, uh, everything default, except I like to have resume with clients. That way the mission doesn't actually get, doesn't really start going until you've, load in um, but if you you could do resume on load or resume on manual the difference between these would be resume on manual is that you would actually need to unpause the mission when you load in resume on load would be as soon as this the mission is loaded with our standalone server that it will uh, it'll start running if you were going to run this like as a persistent server I would recommend probably resume on load versus resume on clients all right, so we're going to go resume on clients. We're going to click save. We're going to click save here. You should see it all updated over here. Um, and then on the list of missions, we're going to go ahead and click this plus here. 
Um, and you'll notice that we're under the open beta server. So I'm actually going to click this icon here to move us up one. I'm going to do it one more time to get us to save games. And then I am going to go into open beta here. I'm going to scroll down to missions. I'm going to scroll down until I find liberation next turn here. So I'm go ahead and click that. We're going to click add. We're going to see it here. I go ahead and click start on our server and it should because this is our first mission it should start loading the server you want to wait until it is actually loaded and running so there we go so it says server paused it's got now running and then all the different information here you'll be able to see you can actually send messages to people if you want um, so what what this means being server pause is once we load in this should start the important part is to see that it is now running because now when we open up dcs world we should be able to see it so let's go ahead and open up dcs world all right so here we are in dcs world we're going to go ahead and click on multiplayer you'll notice that you'll see my server popped up and then you'll see all the other servers that exist so i'm going to go ahead and search for me um, and so it's important to give it something that you know what it is uh, but what we'll do is we're actually going to connect to our loop back IP address as opposed to our public IP address so if we click on so this top one you'll see that I have 127.0.0.1 down here uh, just above the server description and that is your own IP address it's I would recommend that you connect to your loopback because it's going to actually be connecting more or less directly um, as opposed to if you were to select the other one which would be your public IP address. Um, and you should get a slightly better performance when you directly connect um, through your loopback. So we're going to go ahead and click join. It's going to ask me for a password. Um, if I think this is already saved appropriately. Nope, guess not. Uh, go. All right, so we just finally loaded into our uh, server. You'll see that you have your opportunities to select uh, the different uh, flights that you have set up. So if you only had one one player, you would only have one flight besides the tactical commander or the observer. And then uh, because we created two, we have two. So you can just click on it. Um, it'll select you into there. You can click briefing. Um, it'll tell you the briefing here, tell you basic information about the situation, uh, your flights. Um, it, it's not, there's yeah, it's different threats that are available, things like that. So this is all procedurally generated, we, we just click fly, and it should drop us right into our jet here. So here we are, we're now just loading in, looks like we're all loaded in there now. Let's zoom out a little bit. Go ahead and close our canopy just for the sound. All right, so now we're in and you would just fly this like you would fly uh, any other mission. You'd start up, you'd go do whatever you want. If we look at our F-10 map, um, you'll see different pieces of information, whether or not you have uh, you know, based on what you've selected in terms of how you, you know, do you want to see all your allies? Do you only want to see fog of war? Do you want to, you know, all that is all set up here. Um, if you click on this here, this, you know, this icon with the, looks like a graph almost, um, it'll show you all of the different waypoints and things. Um, and so at this point you would just go and fly and do your mission. When you were done with your mission, uh, there's nothing that you need to do per se. You would just click, uh, you, you just hit escape, and you can just, you know, quit directly to desktop. So that's what we'll do. Now, once you've finished everything and you've you've 
you're done, you've exited the desktop, and you're ready to turn in, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and stop your server. So we'll just stop that there. And then we'll minimize this and we'll go over here back to DCS Liberation. You'll notice that nothing really happened because we were only there for about 30 seconds. Uh, but you'll notice that the screen changed to show you the mission status with all the different units that were destroyed, if, thing, if a base was captured. And you have three options. You can accept the results, which will move you into the next phase of the, uh, of the campaign. If you made a mistake or you just... You know, maybe you, you started a game, couldn't finish it, you had to move, you know, you had you got busy doing something else. Uh, you can actually click abort mission and it'll it'll basically wipe this out. And then if you ran into an issue, like maybe um, you finished the game, but something crashed or there's some other issue, you can actually click manually submit. Um, what we're going to show you the manually submit just so that you can see it. If you click on it and then it'll put you into the DCS liberation folder here and you want to select the state.json. Basically what this JSON file is, is it has a li it's basically a giant list of everything that's happened in the game. Um, so if you were to click this and click open, um, it would submit that information for you. Uh, we'll hit cancel because this did, did technically pick up what we did, which was nothing. We'll click accept results. You'll see this, which is a debriefing page. If there were casualties, it would tell you the blue casualties and the red casualties. You click OK. Um, and then now we actually need to go and, and rebuild um, you know, our packages. Uh, we'd have to probably delete things out, move stuff around, do whatever we want. But you'll notice that now we're on turn two. It's later in the day. It's now 1800. Um, everything else has you know, populated in terms of air superiority, front line, economic strength, etc. And then we we got a little bit more money in our budget. You'll also notice that if you were doing well or poorly, your front lines will move and they'll move along this red line here. And really that's all there is to the basic parts of how to play DCS Liberation. At this point, you know, I basically taught you everything that you would need to in order to get going. Um, the biggest additional thing, uh, so let's go ahead and cheat really quick so I can show you. Um, so let's pretend I'm going to go ahead and go to our cheat menu and we're going to do base capture cheat. Um, I'm going to capture this base. So let's pretend that we blew a bunch of missions and we finally captured this airbase here. So we're going to capture it. Uh, we can have 10 aircraft over there. Um, but if you recall, we don't have anything. Uh, we have we have no squadrons over there, so we can't buy anything. But if we go into our air wing, and let's say I want to move my, um, I'm going to move my, uh, uh, where are my Apaches? Sure, I'm going to move my air pirates here. These Apaches. And I want to move them here to Haite. I just select that and I close it. And now if we go over here, we should see that they're transferring out. And so that's what's happening. They're going to be taking that and they're going to fly over here. And then next turn, they should be available. The other thing that you'll see is when you take, um, when you take a base, these will all turn red here. And that's because you need to purchase new components. So for instance, uh, this base comes with two, I guess, anti-air emplacements, early warning radar, and then these are like um, stationed units that you can have that will support the air base. Um, you'll also notice over here, uh, down by the coast, there's other things that are available. So two more radar systems, uh, anti-air system, and then these particular um, resources are now ours, which increase, if you notice on the top here, it increase the amount of money we're getting per turn. So in order to repair them, because um, this is the same if, you know, another flight came in and damaged them, they, you know, blow up your, your Patriot system or whatever, all you got to do is click on it here. Um, you're going to click buy replace. Uh, you can pick, you know, what type of 
system do you want? I want a Patriot. And then I can change the orientation of my SAM site. I'm going to tell it to head towards the conflict by replace. Yep. That's good. I think we're, I think we're good there. Close. Um, here we're going to replace the early warning, early warning radar system. Cool. And then over here, I get some naysams. And then here we can purchase our units that we wanted. So let's say that I wanted an armor group with anti-air. Um, I'm going to take a couple of linebackers. I want a couple of Bradleys, and then we can purchase those. And I can do that for each unit that needs to be purchased. So it's important to remember to do that when you take uh, units. And the reason is, is that it will help you significantly in terms of maintaining um, your different assets if you haven't already destroyed them. Uh, one thing to note is if you do destroy like all these tanks and this, uh, this ammo storage command post FARP thing, um, if you destroy everything here, the only things that you'll be able to replace are the military uh, components. So you'd be able to replace the SAM, early warning radar, and that'd be it. Everything else would be destroyed and you would have, you know, there would be nothing left, um, nothing to, to keep. Um, so keep that in mind when you are, you know, doing this is, you know, do I want to keep... Um, you know, do I want the added components, or do I want to just make sure that the the bad guys red red four doesn't have access to them? So that's that's something to keep in mind. But other than that, you know, this is by and large the the main components of DCS Liberation. Uh, very simple uh, in terms of like setting up missions and running them, but it's very powerful. And then in later subsequent videos. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how you can make your own campaigns, um, how we can, you know, how we can, you know, potentially enable different mods. So there's a mod for the F-14 um, that I want to enable, um, which is to add the some different air-to-air uh, -air missiles. Uh, but if you just try to add them, add the mod to it, and then launch DCS Liberation. Right now it crashes, so we'll talk a little bit about DCS Liberation development as I uh, you know, get into it. We'll talk about building factions and other things later, but uh, I wanted to get all the videos out for just how to play it first, um, and which we've done. So we'll end here, and then you know, we'll have new videos in the near future, hopefully, about how to do some of these more advanced um, more advanced things. So thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next video.